Well, my name is Joe Duff, and I'm uh, a lead pilot and CEO of Operation Migration. That's an organization, a non-profit organization that I founded or co-founded back in the early 1990s. Uh, if you remember the movie Fly Away Home from Columbia Pictures starring Jeff Daniels and Anna Paquin, that was, uh, that was us. That was based on our story, and we did all the flying and all the bird training for that, uh, for that movie. But since then, we've moved on, and, and uh, we have developed this technique of using ultralight airplanes to teach migration to whooping cranes. Back in the 1940s, there were only 15, 15 whooping cranes. That's all that existed. And the problem is that whooping cranes learn to migrate by following their parents. So if there's no parent generation, then they don't migrate. So trying to reinstate them and reestablish them back in this flyway, um, they need to be taught to migrate, and that's what we do. We step in and ask, act as surrogate parents. Now, right now, we're at the Russellville Airport in uh, Russellville, uh, Alabama. Uh, we're stuck here in bad weather. You can see it's kind of damp and overcast behind us. We need uh, fairly ideal conditions to move forward. And then the birds follow us south. They just, uh, we've uh, worked with them since they were in the egg. They're raised at the Patuxent Wildlife Research Center in Maryland where we do the early imprinting and, uh, and rearing and introduce them to the aircraft for the first time. When they're about uh, 50 days old, they're moved out to the Wisconsin, uh, central Wisconsin, to the White River State Wildlife Area, where we have a training facility, all in isolation. People don't get to see the birds up close. And then uh, we condition them to follow the aircraft. And then starting in October, we lead them south. And you can see that uh, we started this year on October 9th, and we are now in... Um, Alabama and I think what is it the 17th today so of December so it's been a long trip and we're still not finished so you going where where are you, where are you? We're eventually taking the birds down to uh, two places, actually. We divide this flock. We take half of them to the St. Mark's National Wildlife Refuge, which is south of Tallahassee, and the other half go to the Chassahowitzka National Wildlife Refuge, which is down by Homosassa uh, Springs and uh, Crystal River area. Uh, we do that so that if we have one catastrophic event over the winter, uh, we have a, a storm or something happening, then, then we don't lose all the birds. Now, these birds will be monitored over the winter. Um, they are they will be uh, housed in a, what we call a release pen. It's about uh, four acres. It has a 12-foot high fence around it. It's protected by an electric wire, but it's not top netted. Now, the birds are very used to pens. They go in there. They're happy to spend time in there. Then during the day, they, they take off and they'll wander around the marsh and they slowly learn to be wild birds and, and feed on natural wild foods. At nighttime, we show up again and call them back into the pen and we feed them. They're happy to do that. And they're inadvertently protected by this fence from predators until they become wild. And then uh, in early spring, uh, they'll one day take off and fly around, and they may come back two or three times, but then one day they just uh, take off and they're gone, and they make it all the way back up to Wisconsin on their own. And so uh, our target eventually is uh, 125 individuals, including 25 breeding pairs. So we have roughly 100 birds out there now migrating between Wisconsin and Florida, so we're getting close. We have three offspring so far that have learned the same route by following their parents who learned it from us. So that part is working slowly. Whooping cranes don't breed until they're roughly five years old, so it is a long process, but we're getting there. Um, you know, this species, uh, uh, whooping cranes, or cranes in general, have been around for 65 million years, so... Um, it's a long time to have all. They've, they've, uh, they've been here a lot longer than we have. And uh, a whooping crane is what you would call a keystone species. Uh, if you save a whooping crane, then you have to save the habitat that a whooping crane uses. And when you save it for a whooping crane, you save it for all the less um, engaging creatures. It's easy to... Uh, to attract interest in a bird as beautiful as a whooping crane, but it's it's harder to attract interest in a snail, but both are important to our survival. Wetland habitat is critical. It uh, absorbs heavy metals, it cleans up pollution, it uh, stores water, it prevents floods, um, and it's just a critical to our survival. So in the end, we're trying to save the whooping crane, but it may be the whooping crane that saves us. Mm -hmm.